another edition of the Business and Personal Podcast, where we bring you closer to the people you do business with. And thrilled today to have Mark and Linda Staffen on with us. They're the owners of Core Insurance Advisors based out of Tennessee, and they serve several areas around the United States, as we'll talk about here today. But uh, it's good to catch up with you outside of the craziness of annual enrollment and family duties and uh, find a little bit of time to get this recorded. So thanks for joining. Oh, yeah. Thanks for having us. We're yeah, excited thank you about so this. Much. Yeah. So this is the business and personal podcast. So I want people to kind of get to know you guys a little bit better, kind of what it's like to work as a husband wife duo. I always find those interesting. Um, so how you keep it happy on both sides of it. So uh, take away whoever wants to kind of get started. You know, how'd you meet? Um, what's core all about? How do we meet? Yeah, we uh, we both were in the in the insurance business for a long time, and we both worked. You for, longer than me. That's true, me longer. But uh, we both worked for the same company in different markets, and uh, you know nothing was going on there. But we became friends. I think we saw each other like once a year at some <laughs> annual meeting or whatever. And uh, long after, uh, we just became friends, started talking. One thing led to the other, and lo and behold, um, she actually said yes. There was a dramatic pause, but she did say yes. So. <laughs> Yeah, so we we uh, we dated long distance for like three years, and then I finally coerced her to move to the Nashville area, and we've been going strong ever since. But uh, so yeah, we the industry not only we do now, but also kind of brought us together, which is a cool thing. Yeah, and the timing of it actually, when I moved to the Nashville area, is, um, just a few months before that is actually when I started Core Insurance Advisors. So. So, so Linda, you started Core, and then Mark joined from there. Yes, um, started the agency um, coming up on seven years ago, and um, and then three years ago, uh, Mark left the corporate world, and um, so this time I coerced him, uh, <laughs> left the corporate world, and uh, joined me, and now we run this together. For the record, the interview process was really, really hard, but she put me through. <laughs> But it worked. <laughs> yeah, you can never be too sure, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Somebody must be doing something right because uh, both both of your uh, engagements are still in place here, so uh, still going strong. So nowadays, work and home are already intertwined, even if you don't work with your spouse. Like so many people work from home, so it's like you almost feel like you can't pull yourself away from work on a daily basis anyway. But then also, when you're married, it's like work feels like it's 24 seven. So how do you kind of try to set those boundaries where, hey, work's off right now and we're on real life situation? Well, I mean, we try to set hours that we work um, and stick to it. You know, we'll schedule meetings to talk about business stuff and things like that. And then, you know, we'll, like last night, for example, we're like, okay, putting the computer up, the work day's over, you know, and away we go. So there's sort of a, a demarcation that says, hey, we're working now uh, and then we're not working at the same time. You know, there's days when it kind of slips in where dinner to conversation carries over into work stuff. But uh, but I think we also approach it with a really good sense of humor. You know, we have a lot of trust for each other, but we also know how to laugh. So uh, in those moments where maybe there is tension or whatever and we've carried it too far we're like hey wait a second you know the, the clock's up we're yeah. not working now so we just try yeah. to make it fun i think we also have a really great um respect for each other and and what we each bring to the table not only um in our marriage um but also in business so it, it we have a really great balance of um you know, um, what what I do best, what he does best. It's like, okay, you know what? That's that's where well, you take care of that because you're way better at that. So um, yeah, I think we, I mean, so that's been really great. And I mean, even before we work together, just having that mutual respect and for each other and the boundaries and, and what we each bring to the table. And it is, it's fun. I mean, there's some couples we know, they're like, oh no, I could never work with that. <laughs> <You know>? Yeah. <laughs> But for us, it's just, uh, it is, it, it goes really great. And it's just like our married relationship, you know, we just get along really well. And uh, yeah, so it's kind I of mean, team even sport. Pickleball, we started playing <laughs> pickleball and we met other, um, when we started in that, we had other couples say, I can't play with my spouse. And so it was really, uh, so we were like, okay, this will be interesting, but we work together. We work out together. We work from home together and 
we travel together and we play pickleball now together. And so it's, we, it's like, I often say it's a team sport. So yeah, <laughs> exactly. Oh, know your lane, stay in your lane. That seems like pretty good advice, right? Yeah. That is true. Yeah. Always know who the boss is. <laughs> so you know i look at what you all do is you're basically like stress relievers for seniors you're like solution specialists i don't even ever think of sales as really coming to the equation and, and you definitely embrace that with all the things you're doing with the community with walking clubs um, in several areas of the state pickleball tournaments that you've done um, how important is it for you first and foremost just to be recognized as like senior solution specialist, I guess. And then the sales just kind of happens to come after that. Yeah. yeah. For me, um, very important. I mean, that's actually um, how I got started in this. Um, well, I just have a heart for serving people, um, not only in with what we get to do every day in the senior community, but also just in our own community of, of you know, where we live and outside of work, um, just always finding a way of where we can serve, such as being part of a rotary and being part of um, different nonprofits and being on boards. And just, you know, I think when you just have a heart for serving people, um, it comes out in our everyday, our every interaction with our customers to um, people that we do actual business with, and it makes it easy. Um, and from there, it just grows because I think people really pick up and detect and know when um, it's genuine and sincere, and um, and that's where the foundation really of where this has built and and has stemmed from, and then. Just going from there. Yeah, I think and I think people, if, if you're more interested in them than you are yourself, mm -hmm. it goes a long way. So I think for us, it's just, and, and there's still a need for relationships. I realize technology is huge, certainly with the younger generation, but, you know, um, everybody wants that connection. I know it comes sometimes virtually like we're doing right now, but at the same time, we're in people's homes. We get to know them. We get to know their family. And um and and it's not a sales environment it's basically hey i know you as a person you seem really cool whether it's an educational program or pickleball match or whatever and then they come to us and say like hey i kind of like you maybe you can help me out so it's never never sales first you know that yep. typically puts people off yep. you know for sure and i've definitely talked to some of your customers that uh, that's one of the first things that uh, they felt about you all too so what you're doing is definitely working and, and i just love your industry because there's nothing quite like that uh, people that get continuing education like yourself, you're constantly being educated on the changing of Medicare. So the knowledge you have is incredibly valuable, but people pay you a grand total of attention for your services. <laughs> they literally have to pay nothing for, I know when I turned 65 and I've learned a lot working with agents like yourself about Medicare, I'm not even gonna think about trying to do it on my own. I'm gonna work with someone like you. So, um, incredibly valuable services that you bring to the table. Are people just shocked when they find out that they don't owe you anything for your services? Yeah, they are. Yes. Yeah, I, th I, th I think um, there, there's usually a couple cycles. They'll have gone out, tried to do something themselves and gotten so confused. And and then they think that, well, if I you know talk to an agent, I'm gonna have to pay money to do that. And then they find out, you mean you'll, you'll come to my home, you'll talk to me, and you don't care if I enroll or not, you're just here to help me make a good decision. Well, by golly, come on over, you know, and I, it is even just see the look on their faces. It's kind of shocking because their expectations by the time we leave and our agents leave are totally different. You know, it's, it's, uh, you know, that, that, that instantaneous stuff that we have in our world right now, um, it's kind of pleasing that they get the other side, you know, you've taken time to explain something answer my questions and you're not moving forward until I'm comfortable to do so. I think that that just makes such a huge difference. But yeah, it's they freak out. It's sort of like, wow, I didn't realize you were going to come here and do all this, you know, and just kind of help me the way you did. So but that's what we have. You know, our customer base is pretty loyal. You know, we don't really get much turnover and we get a lot of referrals. And I think it's due to how we and our agents interact with folks with that first off the relationship in mind, you know. And, and Linda, just give people that are listening an idea of how much continuing education you have to go to go through to constantly stay on top of all the changes. Yeah, I mean, we well, just 
the licensing itself um, every two years, but every single year we have to go through um, Medicare certification right before the annual enrollment period starts so that we are updated on what the upcoming changes are with Medicare um, so that we can then relay all of that information to the um, beneficiaries um, so that they know how they can best make the decision um, if, you know, if needed for themselves going into the next year. So that is an annual thing, not only with Medicare, but even with the, with the individual carriers that we represent, they too also require uh, recertification every year. So it's not just one, but multi. Yeah, I mean, and, and I'll add too, it's not just a single plan. So right. you might have one carrier mm -hmm. that has four different plans with changes and you multiply that by like eight carriers in the market. It's, yep. uh, it's a lot of information. So for all of you listening at home that are thinking about doing this on your own, that haven't gone through all that education, you your head's probably already spinning <laughs> and don't yeah. even try this on your own. So when I when I think of the people that may have stumbled across this, they're starting to research Medicare, I feel like they fall into three buckets and just try to advise them on, you know, when the best time is to call you. So let's kind of, let's start with the people that are not 65 yet, getting close. So they're just starting to research and figure out what Medicare is. What is the best time for them to reach out to you? Um, well, there's folks that will, if they're coming in to Medicare or maybe that they're retiring, that's the other, I mean, we get quite a few calls from that too. So maybe they're not, Medicare is still months down the road, um, or even a year or so down the road, we'll get folks that will call us and say, Hey, I'm getting ready to retire. Um, and maybe I'm eligible for Medicare or that soon to be. And can you guide me on what's needed or um, what my options are until that becomes available? So we provide them with that guidance as well. And um, but, you know, three months, three to four months before they're eligible uh, or for before their birthday in that enrollment. And, you know, and whether it is in one appointment or two or three appointments, because sometimes some folks will, you know, really want to know what my options are months in advance. And then, you know, it's a lot of information. So then we'll meet with them possibly again, right before the enrollment so that they can really narrow down and make sure that they understood what their options were that was shared with them a few months prior. Then there's a second group of people that I feel like is actually growing and based on the state of our economy. And that's people that are age 65 that are still working. Mm -hmm. um, you probably, you know, have a lot more of folks in that situation than you've ever had before. So then you're comparing employer plan versus Medicare. And I know every situation is different, so there's not a standard answer for those people. But um, when should they reach out to you and what are, what's kind of your advice for those people? Well, I, I, to your point, it's unique to the individual in the company. So large companies tend to have different benefit offerings and Medicare works differently with groups that have 100 employees and over versus 100 employees under. So I think, you know, whenever they get to, you know, the Medicare age, whether they're going to continue to work or retire, kind of like Linda said, that group, it's always good to talk to us every year um even if they're going to continue working because their employer benefits change um in the market that we have the 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 non-employer benefit market for medicare changes and so what it allows us to do is really sit down and say hey tell me what you got uh at work here's what the cost is going to be here's what it looks like and then if you were to go outside here would be those you know the options for you if you did and um, what those ramifications may be, because when you put working folks in there or retiree programs in there, um, it's a little more cautious because sometimes if you leave, you're not going to have the opportunity to go back. So um, I think same kind of timeline when those people get to the point where, wow, I'm getting my Medicare and I'm still working. That's a great time to talk to us. And then once a year as their benefits roll out, this is probably the other good time for them to chat with us. Mm -hmm. Don't treat it like Netflix and just put it on auto renew. You probably <laughs> want to review it and have somebody review it for you every year. There's so many things that change yes. all the way around, right? Yeah, and I think that's the the thing we notice the most, I would say that um, is an irritant to, to people is when they don't know. You know, they'll just sort of say, well, hey, I was on that plan last year. 
I'm going to stay on this year. They don't necessarily go through benefits. They don't want to sit down and chat about it. And then like, hey, wait a second, this got reduced or this changed. And those are the kind of surprises that, you know, nobody wants. And you certainly don't want them after the year started. So it's really important, regardless of whether you're working or not. If you're on Medicare coming into it, that's really important that you chat with somebody at least once a year as the new benefits come into play, because there are their changes. And that kind of covers that third bucket of people, the the Netflix crowd, I like to call them, the ones that have always yeah. done auto renew. They've had Medicare for a while. They never knew Mark and Linda existed. Stumbled yeah. across this podcast. Well, geez, if they're not going to charge anything, maybe I should get a second opinion. So when can those people reach out? Well, they can reach out whenever they want to. There's there's a couple of things with those folks. Number one, if you're in a market that has a five-star plan, you can move one time during the year outside of the regular enrollment periods. And so maybe just to rehash that briefly for those folks that may see this is, you know, you've got, um, you know, October 15th to December 7th is when everybody on Medicare gets a chance to move for the coming year, right? And then it's unadvertised, but there is an opportunity to move from January 1st through the end of March Outside of that, you're really locked in unless you have a special election, but a five-star plan in the market allows you to make a change. So we would encourage people, when in doubt, just reach out, you know, um, and we can help them understand there is or is not an election period for you. And if even if there isn't and they know they want to make a change, now we've got some dialogue going before okay. the next opportunity comes to them. So, yeah, it just... Um, it's whenever they feel they want to learn something that, that works the best for them and for us. And then we can figure out, is there an opportunity to change now or do we have to wait? Mm -hmm. I, I think that's the advice that I really want to get out there for people is you can take a phone call at any time, right? It, it absolutely. may not be yeah. at that particular time you can help them, but at least get the conversation started. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I think to that point, um, waiting until the last minute is always a challenge. You know, it does happen, but even if you're six months out before there's an election period, hey, that allows us to really spend some quality time, do some great work. And, you know, they're not on a timeline to say, well, gosh, I've got, you know, a month to make this this decision. So, yeah, anytime during the year, we chat with people all the time, you yeah. know. Yes, because uh, another thing that I like to do and, and always try to encourage my members to do is to keep um, keep us posted as to what changes um, has taken place, right? So sometimes if, um, you know, I've had members that will call and say, hey, Linda, this is this is what's going on with me now, or this is an upcoming need. Um, is there, am I still on the best plan for me going forward? And, um, or what options do I have? And there's been times where I've been able to say, you know what? We actually do have an option right now, and it's great that you call, um, contacted me to let me know what's going on with you and how your needs have changed. And so here are some options and let's discuss this. Um, and it's been really helpful. I mean, it was especially in those times um, and it's great when we can help them, especially in those times where they didn't know that that was an option and to make that change right now because they didn't know about a five star plan that oh, okay, great. I can make a plan change right now. And this is when I really need it. So um, really encourage them just to not only they don't have to wait during the, until the annual enrollment period is here, anytime throughout the year, if you have a question, if you have a need, if you have a change, um, and maybe you're just curious, so give us a call. Possibly we might be able to uh, um, assist you now. If not, like Mark said, we can start the dialogue. We make a note of it as to, okay, so let's make sure during the annual enrollment period that we connect again so that we can go over what those options are for you. And again, it costs you nothing to get a good second opinion, to get that valuable knowledge. Like, you know, why wouldn't you at least pick up a phone and, and look into it? So oh, yeah. a phone call never hurts. You're right. I mean, no, yeah, nothing to lose. No, never hurts. So uh, a lot of changes going on in Medicare and just, I think, everything in the financial markets in the world right now. And what I love about it, you all love about it, and uh, our listeners should love about it is Medicare is watching the bottom line very closely. Uh, we want it to be there for us when we get of that age. So I, I like to hear that they're doing that. Uh, that means a lot of changes are happening. Prescription drug, drug plans are all over the place, some higher, some lower. 
it's good job security for you because uh, all that confusion just uh, you know causes the need for your services to be more and more valuable but as briefly as both of you can we'll start with you mark just kind of give people an impression of your overall thoughts of where Medicare is at now, you know, some of the changes you're seeing and what people should be aware of. I think there's um, there's there's a there's an active current thing and then something that just actually came out today for uh, 2025. So um, from a plan perspective, we're seeing more plans tailored to chronic diseases. So uh, in the past, there weren't that many out there and we're starting to see that take foothold. So if you're somebody who's got, you know, COPD, high blood pressure, you know, one of those ongoing things, uh, it's worth an inquiry because there's plans out there that may be available and they cater to your specific problem. And um, that's really been a great change versus the one size fits all, everybody grab this plan. So um, those chronic condition plans uh, seem to be on the grow, if you will. There's more carriers coming out with them, more talk about that. And then the other thing um, I would say for the future, and today CMS announced that they're going to be reducing reimbursement rates uh, for next year. Typically what that means is a possible reduction in benefits. So um, that's where we again come in to say, did your plan change? If it did where? Uh, and is that going to impact you? Sometimes, hey, this changed and I don't even use that benefit. So it doesn't, you know, bother me. Some customers say that. Others are like, hey, I use that a lot and it impacted. Now maybe we need to look across the marketplace to see, is there a plan out there that maybe gives me a better benefit in that area? So I think those, you know, one's probably good news. One's probably not so good news, if you will. But I think those two, from my perspective, are the two big ones that that I see in the Medicare space going on right now. Yeah. What about you, Lynn? Anything to add to that? Um, you know, I think, I mean, Mark really highlighted the um, the two big things out there that a, um, a lot of customers or um, beneficiaries are not even aware, as you mentioned, aware that's out there. And, um, and, you know, with the upcoming changes. So those were, I would say, are the two biggest. Now, the beauty of the internet is that when we put this out there to the world, anybody anywhere could search it and find it. So, you know, Core Insurance Advisors uh, originated in Tennessee, but we know you work in other states and you're always looking to bring new agents on. You have plenty of agents working with you around the country. So give our listeners an idea of where you do business in right now. And uh, for agents out there that might be listening, uh, what it would be like to work with Core. Sure. Um, we're in Tennessee, obviously, and uh, we've got agents that work those contiguous states to Tennessee, uh, North Carolina, Georgia, uh, and then uh, those, those are the, in Texas. Those are really the main areas that we are. Um, not to say if you're in a state that's not in that group, but the bulk of our focus, the bulk of our membership uh, falls across those states for sure. Yeah. And as far as um, agents working with us, um, you know, it's been a really beautiful thing um, how agents, how our agency has grown um, really by word of mouth, um, referrals, folks that we've known from um, our past, um, either, you know, in the industry or someone that's looking to get into it. So it's been really sweet um, because our team, is we're like family. We help and support each other um, as we are each helping and supporting our members and, and the community. And um, so we're not, our agency um, model is different. Uh, whereas there's a lot of agencies that are just recruiting and expanding and growing and it's about the numbers. We are not, we never have been and um, and so the agents that have come on board, it's some that have been with others in the past, have just found it um, very refreshing. This is what they share with us and how we're doing things differently because just like we put the consumers first, um, we also want to make sure that the agents that we're aligned with are also have the same passion and, um, and that we too are also helping and supporting them. So, and together we help and support each other. So 
Uh, I'll tell you a funny story. We met we met with some of our agents and you know they always ask the question like do you guys have a sales goal, right? And they look at us crosswise when we say no. Our goal is your goal. Mm -hmm. So, you know, whether you want to do 100, 500, 10, it doesn't really matter what that is. We don't we've never since she started this in day 1 said here's the goal for core it really rolls up from our agents. And so I think I think it makes a difference because I do think just because we run opposite to kind of most people in our business, we're not interested in hiring a bunch of people. Mm -hmm. uh, we're just really looking for the people who have the same kind of passion we do. You know, they put the people first and serve your community. So, um, but yeah, I, I think that hopefully that addressed what you asked. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sometimes some of the best goals don't involve numbers at all. They involve make, maybe the number involved is like a number of new connections you want to make or, you know, just treating people the right way. And guess what? The numbers happen to take care of themselves in the long run. They do. No, yes. you're right. Yeah. Exactly. So um, for you've already kind of touched on how rewarding this career has been for you, but just for maybe somebody listening that's not in the career right now, look lost, maybe doesn't know what they want to do. How valuable has it been for you working with seniors? Um, you know, it's valuable. It's so, it's just rewarding just to be, um, with them, encouraging them. Um, we love creating, um, you know, ways to, or and to help support them and love the various things, uh, areas in which, you know, like they really just want to, um, get active, you know, such as a pickleball or a walking club, which we've We've um, started the walk various walking clubs in the area across the state. So that's been a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, so it's just, it's great to, and even hear it from them and saying, you know, we love the programs and we love the various things that you're doing with us here at the, set, at the senior centers and in the community. Um, you know, it's encouraging us to get out there and be active. So that's been really nice. Yeah, I think I think if for for someone who's either considering this industry or making a change, maybe just a little different style. Mm -hmm. The you know to to expand upon what Linda said, it's just you get to meet a lot of cool people. I mean, there's a lot of wisdom out there and a lot of awesome stories of these folks. And I think sometimes as people get older, their stories get discredited, and we get to hang out with them, and it's amazing what some of these people have done when you get to know them and you know just funny stories on how they met what they did for a living i mean never judge a book by a cover but some of those folks when they start talking like wow that's an incredible life you've led and it's pretty awesome to to have that on the other side from a business perspective uh coming in as an agent or agency owner you know it, it really is something that can provide you longer term income you know i came from corporate america and a lot of times when they would make a decision, it would have an impact on us financially, right? Um, but we're in, in this business, you get the opportunity to build something for yourself mm -hmm. that may leave and leave a legacy for your children, yes. you know, residual income later. So there's a lot of pluses to it. Again, it's not about that money necessarily, but from a career choice, it's kind of the best of both worlds. I guess that's why we've been doing it for so long, mm -hmm. where you know, you get the people fix, which is awesome. But at the same time, you're building a lasting legacy by having your own business. And that's how we look at agents. It's like you are your own business. Our job is to help your business succeed. So I think it's it is it's really the best of both worlds, which I guess why we've been doing it. For yeah. so long. Well, and 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 one thing that we've heard from um, well, actually, from several of the agents that um, came to us that's brand new in the industry. Um, they've shared that they love the freedom and flexibility this has given them. It allows them to have a really great work-life balance while serving the um, the community, the senior population, and um, at the same time, as Mark mentioned, building a legacy that they can then leave behind for their family. So it's a win-win. That's one of the things I love with all the agents that I work with. They kind of told me the same thing that they learn so much from their customers. And you know, sometimes these people are just lonely and looking for someone to talk to. So they'll tell you everything and they, they just like to talk. So, uh, yeah, 
I'm, I'm glad you brought that up, Mark, because that is definitely an interesting part of uh, what you do. So um, I'm going to put both of you on the spot. We got time for one success story. And then this is my favorite part of these podcasts because I've heard some crazy ones. You know, someone was about to have a surgery and the coverage they had was going to cost them $3,000 more than if they just made the slightest change to their plan. That just a little change saved $3,000. So um, without getting into too exact details of uh, the situation, just uh, can you share with us one success story that really comes to mind? Uh, well, actually, the example that you just gave is just one of the uh, similar success story that um, I had with a member that called and shared, you know, a new diagnosis and, um, you know, how and they had to pay that up front. The plan that they were on had a much higher maximum out of pocket, which was going to um, meet the what the cost of the services were going to be for this member. And um, it uh, because that year, the plan received a five star rating. So it allowed me to make a plan change for um, for him and it reduces maximum out of pocket by three thousand dollars. And so because the um, provider required that upfront cost um, because it was going to more than exceed that amount. And um, so that right there was it saved it saved him over three thousand um, dollars and it just made that what they were already going through a little bit easier to take um, because without, you know, then a burden of that financial hit. And that was going to save them that much money. So very similar to the example you just gave. And you know, I'm not to, I'm not supposed to one up her, but I'm going to buy a thousand dollars. But a similar thing, I, I think sometimes as we get older, you know, it's helped us because we see it all the time. Where you may be making great money now, but as you age, your income potential, you know, the money you have becomes a lot more important. You're not going to go earn a bunch more. And a lot of these folks who've been out on Medicare supplement plans their whole life, we're always told if you ever leave it, you can never go back. Well, there is a program that, you know, allows you to try it for a year. If you don't like it, you can still go back to your med stuff. Well, this one guy I met with had never been told that before. His eyes kind of got big. It's like, what do you mean? I've, I've never heard of such a thing. And we moved him over to a Medicare Advantage plan. And he saved four thousand yeah. dollars in that year, and for him, that four grand was—I mean, four grand is a lot of money to us too, but it was a game changer for him. So those, that's kind of one of those wins where just that one little piece of information made a big enough difference in his life, and that's a that's a huge win. Just another example why I love your industry. I mean, you know, if you refinance a house, yeah, you can save money that takes years to recoup the closing costs. You make a slight tweak like that, it's an immediate savings uh there's yeah. just and, and you pay nothing yeah for yeah, that it's absolutely just n nothing quite like it yeah um, and that's, that's just a good feeling you know that yeah. you get when you help people it really is yeah so you know at home if you're listening and you get something in the mail about a grocery card uh, if you switch to a medicare plan you might want to call someone like mark and linda first before you jump on that it, you know it might be the best plan for you but there's a good chance that it's not just don't try to do it on your own <laughs> when something this valuable is free you know, sometimes people think, is that legit? Well, guess what? It actually is uh, in this case. So um, thanks again so much for joining me, Mark and Linda. I'm sure there's a lot of people listening either that might be interested in coming to work for you or work with you as a customer. What's the best way to reach you? Yeah, well, they can uh, give us a call at our toll-free number, 877-404-8060. Um, there's a lot, uh, a lot of really helpful information on our website as well. Um, we have some great resources available on coreinsuranceadvisors.com. And even on the directly on the website, if you want to actually connect with us, schedule an appointment, there is a, um, and they can do that directly on the site. Just talk to, click on talk to an agent, fill that out, and we will get that and then reach out to them and get an appointment scheduled or, or a call. See how we can help. Fantastic. All that information is on the screen for people that are listening to the audio version only. You can go to the YouTube version, go to the end, and you can see all the info on the screen. Uh, thanks again so much for joining us. Uh, congratulations on your awesome success, and uh, best of luck moving forward. 
Okay. Oh, thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. Thanks for Had having us.